Things appear to be returning to normalcy, whether it be air travel for the most part, roads throughout the high country, most of the mountainous spots still have some issues. There's going to be some icing, some rainfall, and some snow for the northeast. That'll give us some winter driving conditions there, as well as very deep snows throughout the Sierras, as well as other ranges across the west. We'll break it down for you. All the details are straight ahead in today's Daily Shower. A quick note, thank you for subscribing. If you have not hit that alert bell, go ahead and do so. That way, when I post new videos, you know about it. And headlines this time pertain to the amount of water coming out to the west. So let's get started with this week. And the big talking point is the amount of precip, the amount of moisture moving into the western U.S. This gravy train of moisture, the atmospheric river. Some have called it the Pineapple Express because the flow kind of starts around close to Hawaii anyway. But during the next week, look at the bullseye of water. This is total water, combination of ice, snow, everything. From Buffalo all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico and from Seattle all the way down to San Diego. Very wet pattern in two focused areas west as well as east. We're going to break this down carefully for you as we go forward. So let's look at the next three days. We've got the rainfall from Tallahassee to Crestview over Mobile close to Mobile, over Albany into the Atlanta area, on up toward the north near Salisbury, and Blacksburg to Charlottesville. These blue shades here indicate, oh, about a half inch to an inch and a quarter of total water. And then we see uh, an area up here near uh, Buffalo and Erie that will also have similar totals, a half inch to an inch and a half, but that's going to come as a wintry mix. Some snow, the possibility of some rain for some, and some icing for others. But a valuable amount of water there for the eastern U.S. Turn to where it's very prolific, very, very wet out across the west. Washington and Oregon. Here we have close out to the National Park there, the Olympics. We've got a bullseye there of three inches to four inches of total water, total precip on the way. And then we have a couple more bullseyes as you skirt down the coastline into California. But California, especially central and northern, will have a lot of water. This is just three-day total from Crescent City to Eureka, Mount Shasta through Redding down to Yuba City and Sacramento, and then for the Sierras, as well as isolated areas along the coast from Monterey, close to Santa Maria, close to LA, to Pasadena, wrapping up kind of around Irvine or so. Some of those totals are gonna to go threes, fours, fives, to seven inches of total water. Tremendous. Snowfall in the Sierras will be rather deep. So let's look at that. This is snow. That last map was total precip, rain and snow combined. Just looking at snowfall throughout the Sierras, mostly west and northwest of Bishop, we're going to be pushing to about 33 to 36 inches or so. West of Reno, west of Carson City, we're pushing closer to two feet of snowfall, but a lot of water here. And along these lines, here's some interesting stats for you. This is the snowpack to date. We've heard lots of headlines about all that snow in California and the Sierras. Well, let's put it into perspective. The northern Sierras, the Trinity area, 133% of normal. With all the headlines, you might think that number would be higher. In terms of the season average, what is it like for the season? They're about halfway there, half of the snowpack for the total season. The central Sierras now, 182% of normal is on the ground now, that snowpack. And in terms of season, that's about 70% of where we are for the season. Southern Sierras, really impressive, more than double. 205% of the snowpack is on the ground now. And in terms of the season, that would account for about 77% of the normal peak we would have around April 1st. So really tremendous and a quick aside there that they're doing well in the Sierras. But as we go forward in time, we may see that precip, the moisture train, begin to drop off. And we talked about that on Weather 5280, the most recent post right here on the homepage, Atmospheric River Delivering Torrential Rain, Snow and Wind to California. Significant flooding possible this week. You can click on that story. It's free to everybody. As far as what else is happening, let's look at the West. This is snowfall still. A little bit of snowfall in the Cascades, the Wasatch, some of the Rockies uh, will come away with some snowfall, 4 to 8 and 6 to 12. So, yes, some snow, but relative to California, a far cry from that kind of snowfall. And again, outside of Salt Lake, outside of Gunnison, south of Glenwood Springs, kind of focusing on Aspen and Crested Butte, they're going to come away with several inches. Not gangbusters. We'll have some gangbuster snow later, uh, but for the next three days, that's what we have. Around the lakes, here's Superior Ironwood to Marquette and the Sioux. 
down to Petoskey or so, this air, this swap, if the swath, if you will, of the blues, that's going to be around four inches, perhaps six inches in some isolated areas near the lakes. Around Minneapolis, there will be some travel issues, kind of a wintry mix, but drivers there are pretty decent anyway, so it's not like Denver or something where a little bit of snowfall shuts everything down. So Minneapolis, a little bit of snowfall, a couple to a few inches possible, probably lower end though, uh, but there will be some travel impacts anyway outside of Minneapolis. As far as uh, the Great Lakes region from Erie to Buffalo and Watertown, and then as you go up toward Maine, kind of the, the heaviest snowfall is going to be in uh, western Maine. That's going to be four to six inches, but keep in mind anybody on this map view is going to have the potential for rain, some icing, and these snowfall totals. So it's going to be quite a wintry mix there across New England with the associated travel troubles there too. Let's get into next week, and we're still looking at the same focal areas. The east and the southeast, risk of heavy precip from the 11th of January to the 12th, and a very wet pattern continues out across the west from Oregon, Washington, down through California, and at times northern Mexico, kind of stretching into Arizona at times too, as well as Nevada. But risks of heavy precip do continue from about the 11th through the 17th although things will start to calm a little bit as we get into the mid-month and the later month, as it appears. Heaviest snowfall areas, Cascades, Sierras, parts of the Rockies and the Great Basin. And again, that's coming through about the 11th to the 17th or so to give you a heads up there for next week. In terms of total precip, 11th to the 17th here, we're still going to have some wet weather. Denver, Cheyenne, Omaha, Minneapolis, Pierre, Bismarck. So potentially above average precip on the way in those areas. It's kind of relying on on two storms, one would be middle part of next week. If that storm doesn't really pan out or takes a different track, these areas probably will not reach average or above. And then right along the east coast, we're going to be looking at some wetter conditions. Temperatures for the 11th to the 17th, warm across the board. Most everyone warmer than average. Let's take a look at weeks three and four. So now we're looking at the three to four week uh, outlook, and this is the very tail end of January. We're going to be looking at some uh, cooler than normal conditions there for the southwest, uh, warmer pretty much everywhere else. And as we get into the precip, kind of starting to constrict that area, kind of taking it back to the Pacific Northwest, if you will, as well as the New England area. So to wrap up January, in total, the west, likely wetter than average and cooler than average. And then everybody east of the Rockies is going to come very close to normal or below for drier conditions and temperatures likely at or above average for January in total. And we also publish that information for insiders uh, on Weather 5280. If you want to look at the month's outlook, go to the insider section there of Weather 5280. For now, I'm Matt Makins. Thanks for everything that you're doing to help me build this weather community for Makins Weather as well as Weather 5280. Blessings to you and yours as we go throughout this new year ahead.